Hey guys, Erin here. So today's podcast, I got to interview one of my students, and he is an amazing person. His name is Jay Raw. He is an athlete from the High Five Foundation, and he is doing amazing things and forwarding a new path for those who are looking to become a professional athlete. Uh, he had a traumatic incident that happened to him that didn't stop him. It may have slowed him down, but now he's full force. His story is so inspiring. He has developed this amazing ability to discern, and I just thought that that's very valuable for athletes that are trying to make their way up and make a career out of their athletic professionalism. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. It is in two parts, so stay tuned to next week as I'll release the second part. Have a great day, and just so you know, we have our Coach School certification coming up October 18th to the 24th. I only do them once a year. It's coming up. We have online options as well as in person. I hope you can make it out, and yeah, thank you so much. Enjoy the podcast. Namaste. Yeah. And the, you know, the dialogue that you have with yourself, Jay, as you're sharing it here, it's really sweet. It's, it sounds like if you were talking to a buddy or if you were like, I don't know, like an older brother, like father role model, like, listen here, buddy. All right. So we're going to do this no matter what, which is the top us. It's like the, um, the, the inner discipline, like, all right, this is non-negotiable. We're here. We're going to do this, but like, let's be compassionate about it and you know choose to stay and here are the tools and all right let's take a few deep breaths it's you know uh when i would first sign uh show up for recording my podcast like a decade ago it's crazy i've been doing this 10 years uh i would feel so anxious and i just like oh and i'd have to like talk myself into like all right so i was committed to doing a weekly podcast and i get so nervous like oh what if i choke like what if i you know, and I, my editing skills weren't as good as they are now. So I'd like try to do it all in one shot. And so, but then I was able to sort of uh, compassionately talk myself through it. And I think that, you know, you giving it an example of how you talk to yourself is really helpful for any uh, aspiring professional athletes that are listening to this podcast, because they might not realize the importance of that. I mean, you, you would think, but but that might not be uh, one of the things that's in the forefront of their mind, which reminds me and brings me back to the point of, so for those people who are aspiring athletes in, say, these extreme sports, and they're looking for sponsorships, and, you know, they're, they're kind of like um, dazzled by the whole idea of it. What what are some things that you would say to them as far as like, you know, some compassionate advice of things to maybe just look out for, like, and, and then also, you know, give them a little bit of the realness as far as what exactly is involved? Because I think they would be curious about it. So there's a couple things there. And uh, one that I'd like to start with is the compassion aspect, because I think that, you know, a lot of us... Um, maybe aren't aware that that we have a lot of negative self-talk, you know, and that, that negative self-talk starts to build belief systems. And if you do something and you fail, you're like, Oh, I'm such an idiot. You, you could have done that better. Why are you so stupid? All of these mm. things kind of start to create um, an enemy in yourself, so to speak, a, a version of yourself that doesn't like what you did and you can do it better. And let's crack the whip. Come on, you can do it better. And I think that, uh, allowing that compassion and that space to fail and that space um, to not do it perfect and and not saying, you know, don't be a little hard on yourself or don't don't aspire to be better, but find a better way to talk to yourself about it and to right. create a safe space for, for failure because you can't get anywhere, um, you know, more than where you are without failing. And, and if you're not failing in a lot of things, you're not trying hard enough. You know, you're in your comfort zone and and you're not going to get better. So you have to allow and understand that like, if you're trying something new, you might fall, you might fall again and again and again, or you might fail over and over and over. But the ability to pick yourself up and, and dust yourself off and try it over and over and just show up, like you're not gonna do that or you might create a barrier for yourself by saying, you know, 
you're an idiot. You can't do this. You know, why even try? Why bother? I'm never going to make it. Um, I think being able to say, hey, listen, it's okay. You know, it's okay. What'd you do wrong? Okay, how can you fix that? What can we do better? If, if you're if you're an athlete, you're probably videotaping a lot of the things that you do. So video breakdown is becoming extremely important and, and a valuable tool where before you'd have to like remember what you did or have a friend tell you what you did, but you can break it down in this video and say, oh, my arm was here and I could bring it here. Or my legs were doing this and I need to tighten that up. And the rotation was too fast or I came off at that angle, you know, and you're able to to look at that objectively and uh, and say, okay, cool. Now I see where my room for improvement is and now I can do that next time. So I think that those are, that that's a, that's an important thing, you know, kind of getting away from the negative self-talk and, um, and, and building like a, a space or like a buddy or a friend or, or whatever to, to be able to say, Hey, that, that was cool. I'm glad you tried that. Let's do it again. Um, I think when you're trying to navigate the, uh, the world of, of being, you know, a sponsored athlete or, or going for the sponsorships, You know, as a kid, I, I remember making skateboard and, and roller skate videos, and I'm going to send this off to the companies. And I'm going to be sponsored. They're sponsor me tapes on actual, you know, VHSs, and you know, let's get it out there. And uh, you start doing, you know, bigger and badder, and and just going hard for it. And a lot of times, the idea is that you send that tape, they pick it off the pile of a hundred tapes that they have, and they like it, and they call you. Okay, cool, you're a sponsored athlete. You're getting the gear, you're getting the money, you're getting in the photo shoots, you're getting the video parts, you know, you made it. That's that's all it takes. That sponsor me video, it's just all it takes. And, and then that's it. Your, your, you know, accomplishments and your drive, they're going to take you the rest of the way. But, um, you know, I don't think that it's talked about that a lot of these companies don't really have the space for all these athletes. They don't they don't have the room to put you on and pay you properly and and give you, mm. you know, you're not going to earn the money for a car and your apartment and your food and to be able to just do this a hundred percent full time. So what happens with a lot of people is they will, you know, get some free gear, but not really make it much further past that. And I think a couple things happen. I think one of them is that when you get the free gear now, now you're able to tell everybody, yeah, I'm sponsored. Yeah. Now I'm getting the gear from this company. I'm a sponsored athlete, but you're not really, you're not really doing the thing in the way that you, you mean to, you know, you, sometimes you talk about something and and it takes away from that drive to really push further to, to get it because you've already got it, you know, in a sense. Yeah. And, and uh, I think that, you know, it could, it could create an illusion of like, Oh yeah, I'm doing the thing, but you're not, you know, you're getting the free yeah. gear, you're promoting the companies for them and they're getting what they want. You're kind of getting what you want. And uh, it's just not the full, full support. I think it's, I think it's a harder thing to accomplish um than than a lot of people think so you still have to work that job you still have to you know show up to ski or show up to to play your sport when you can because you know you're not getting that full support um i think that the road to that sponsorship is is uh it's kind of an illusion as well you know you think that once you get that part in that video that everything's going to happen for you all the companies are going to reach out to you you're you know you're going to you're going to get the opportunities, but you still have to, you still really have to put in the work and, and chase down those dreams and, and contact all those people and get all the doors shut in your face and keep, keep trying and keep trying. And it, it can be dejecting at times. You know, you think you're good enough. There's people in the industry that tell you that you're good enough, that you're doing, you're doing everything. They don't know why you're not making it. And uh, it can, it can create a space where you're like, well, what, what's wrong with me? You know, mm. you're hanging yeah. so much of your identity on becoming this thing that, when you get shut down and you don't make it and you've been putting in the work and you've, you've got the people telling you that, that you should be there. It, it, it becomes a, well, what am I doing wrong? Am I not good enough? You know, am I not doing this well enough? Should I go bigger? Should I go harder? And it can put mm. you in a space where you're hanging a lot of your identity and your self-worth on, on what other people think, you know, and it, it can, it can create a really negative environment for you. So it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things you, you just have to remember, you know, what you're doing it for and why you're doing it, you know, is your why to only, only to become a sponsored athlete. And if so, why is that, you know, what yeah. do you gain from that that you don't have currently? Um, if it's money. Or well, you said, 
Yeah, sorry. Well, what you said about what you said about self worth, I think, is really important for people to hear because when we uh, tie our self worth to something outside of ourselves, we essentially give our power away. You know, and that, like, I think what you're saying kind of nails it as far as if an athlete is doing that, then they they're putting themselves at, at great risk because then all that compassion and everything you were talking about earlier, as far as checking in with yourself, I think that voice would get dulled because now you're you're looking for some external source to to feel that love, to feel that worth, you know, to feel like, oh, I'm a sponsored athlete and now I, I need to like live up to this. And so having, uh, you know, boundaries and, and also a sort of realistic view about this, like you're talking about, I think is really important for people to hear. I um, just, uh, you know, I used to teach at a prep school a long time ago, and we would have a lot of athletes come through. And I remember there was this uh, U.S. soccer team that came through. And, you know, all the athletes that came through the school, most of them didn't really want to work. So some of them did. But some of them didn't. And I would uh, ask them, I'd say, hey, what happens if you get a knee injury? Oh, that won't happen. I was like, I mean, I'm not wishing anything on you, but I'm just saying, like, maybe you need to pay a little bit more attention to your English essay here. You know, so it's uh, I think it's um, what you're talking about gives a little bit more realistic view. It might be like a little less glamorous or something, but you know, I, I think that what you're talking about is is kind of advocating for them to be an advocate for themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's also really important, like you say, you know, what happens if if you get an injury and understanding that, like, even if you get on with with a couple of these companies and now you're making money, you don't have to work, so to speak. You know, you're putting in the work to, to be the athlete and to be out there. Um, it gives you the freedom to to go at this 100%. So now you can focus all your attention on it. So if you think about all the people that are out there that, that could be or should be professional athletes and aren't, that are working jobs to support themselves and their families, and imagine how much better that person could be if they had the full support and backing of one of these companies to focus all of their attention and their talent on, on becoming better. Like how far could they push it? It's it's mm. a really incredible thought. Like, why wouldn't these companies want to put that money into into these people? It's an investment, and these yeah. people are willing to to you know give everything that they have for their sport and to represent the company and to represent you know themselves and and show like, hey, this is this is what's possible. This is what I can do. Um, it it would be really cool to see to see some of these companies kind of back that idea fully and say you know what? I believe in you. You believe in you. You believe in us. You want to work together. Uh, let's do something special here. Um, but that's not always the case. And, and uh, like you say, with the injury, you know, if, if you get hurt, some of these companies will pull their sponsorships because what, what are you going to be able to do for them? You can't ski, you can't, mm. you can't ride, you can't play the sport. Um, mm. And depending on what your deal is with them and what kind of clauses you have in your contracts, uh, you might lose that all. And if you get hurt bad enough, you might not be able to come back. So I had a, I had like a, a shattering moment for me. Um, I was just starting to get somewhere. I was getting invitations to go to these cool events. I was a couple months away. I was training hard and I had a freak accident um, in the park going off of a really small jump, just trying something new. And I ended up breaking my clavicle into five pieces and my arm was broken so bad or my, my shoulder was broken so bad that I couldn't lift my hand off my lap to pull my goggles off my face. Like I couldn't move my arm. And in that moment, when I realized that I was like, I realized I was putting basically all my eggs in this basket of I'm, I'm going to be professional at this. I'm going to get sponsored. I'm going to be able to support myself. This dream's coming true. Um, all of these positives and all of this, all of these like wonderful things that are happening. And in that moment, when I can't move my arm, I'm like, what happens if I can never move my arm again? What happens if I can't, you know, go back to skiing? I'm not going to get sponsored. I'm not going to get paid for this. What am I going to do with my life? You know, mm. like, and, and thankfully enough, I, I was able to get surgery and my arm got back to hundred percent full range of motion, very strong in a pretty short period of time. But those opportunities that I had for those months that I was recovering were gone. And I had to really think about it. Like, Okay, now this now this illusion is shattered. It's it's not like oh, once I make it, I'm good forever. It's like right. 
I have to stay in shape. I have to stay on top of it. I have to not get hurt. And getting hurt is, I mean, it's part of this. Uh, you look at most of these professional athletes and and they've had a list of injuries that in surgeries and recoveries and season ending injuries. And, and it just makes you wonder like, is this worth it? And if it is, then, then that's amazing, you know, but if it's, if it's not, then, then you have to kind of check yourself and say, okay, well, what am I going to do? And I decided, yeah, no, this is worth it. Uh, I just need to move forward safely. But then there's that fear. <laughs> so it's, it was a little intense. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, uh, using, yeah. oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think with, I think with the self-worth aspect of it, um, you know, I, I didn't realize how much I was putting, I, cause I never really started sit skiing to, to get, you know, sponsored or get, you know, Instagram followers or have anyone really like it, but me, it, it gave me something to look forward to. It gave me something that I could do that I felt like I was excelling at and, and doing well at. And it gave me uh, a lot of joy in a place where I didn't really know what I was going to do next. And uh, yeah. being able to chase that and follow that. And now all these people are enjoying it and people are reaching out to me who had been injured and saying, wow, that's, that's so cool. I've, I've been hurt. I've been stuck, not knowing what to do. I didn't know where to go. Seeing you do this gives me that hope that I can, that I can do it. Um, that gave me a lot of, a lot of validation externally. And I think that uh, it kind of shifted over time from, from doing this for myself to, well, these people think it's cool. So I need to, I need to keep doing this and, okay, now we'll like, why am I not getting the, why am I not getting the sponsorship? Why am I not getting, you know, the, the backing, like, what am I not doing right? And it started taking away from the joy of it. And I had to really sit back and realize like, that doesn't, that doesn't make or break me, you know, it, it's definitely a huge plus and something that I'm looking for and, and something that I think is, is uh, cool to aspire to. But if I don't get it at the end of the day, am I still happy skiing? If I am, then, then I'm on the right path, you know? If I'm not, then I'm not doing it for the right reasons. So it's good to ask good questions like that. You know, uh, first and foremost, it has to come down to you. If it's bringing you happiness and you joy, uh, then that's that's the way to go. That's like your heart saying, yes, this is the correct path. Keep going. And I mean, like for me in my life, I don't know if I'm just like stubborn. I'm like an independent woman. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a yogipreneur. But uh, I've always kind of followed my heart and carved out my own path, like as a life coach, as a, as a yoga therapist, as a, you know, a, a leader in my community. But I think that if you follow your heart and then you show up for it, like you said, and you check yourself, that's what I love about you as an athlete and as a person, Jay. And, and I think this is something that I've watched develop over the years. And I think you've watched with me develop over the years is that discernment. It's the, you know, because judgment is just the mind. Judgment would make us worry. Judgment would um, just kind of separate us from the actual reality. Whereas discernment is you're still checking in with your brain. You're asking good questions, but your heart's also involved. And I think that, you know, you have a, a courage to you and you're willing to kind of go in and ask yourself these questions because, you know, if you've built up this life and then one day you ask yourself that question, why am I doing this? And the answer is like, oh, I'm doing this for my parents' approval or, you know, just as an example, it's like, oof. But to have that good judgment that you're talking about, and I, I hope that anyone listening to this that's an aspiring athlete really walks away with uh, this, this part uh, in their heart is to make those decisions and ask those questions from a very connected space. And to do that, you have to be in alignment with yourself because if not, yeah, then that's when, that's when I think the risk for injury is higher. Not saying that it couldn't happen anyway, but I know for me, like doing roller derby, which is a very full contact sport, my heart started falling out of it. Uh, at one point I stepped away, you know, roller derby had changed. And then I went back to a practice and my heart was back in it. I was like, all right, I'm in it. And I did have to go through that. Oh, can I show up? Because, you know, people, I had like a little fan club, people love me. And, but I wasn't going to put myself on the line, um, you know, because just like your sport, it's like a very high impact, like high, high risk uh, of injury. So us, uh, 
making it into something that is uh, for us to figure out ourselves, to show up for ourselves, to work through our shit. Like you've healed so much through your sport because you've approached it in this heart-centered way, because you have like engaged with it. And because of that, it's like you've grown with it. It's sort of grown with you. And it's it's been a very sort of like intimate experience for you as far as I can tell. And uh, as a result, you are the person that you are today. You know, it's it's awesome and it is really inspiring. And I, that's why I think that, you know, as far as athletes go, you're one of the most inspiring I know. Thank you. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's been cool to see, you know, because like I said, I mean, I, I I just got into it. You know, my mom was was trying to help me find something to do. My girlfriend was trying to help me find something to do that that wasn't just being in the same routine of hanging out in my hometown and and drinking and being depressed and working out and doing yoga and all this stuff, but not really feeling fulfilled. Um, being very self-conscious of, of how slow I moved and, and the effort that it took me to get there and the pain that I was going through daily and the, the loss that I was dealing with that, that I was trying to push away. Uh, it just, uh, it was cool to find something that gave me this freedom that, that I could, I could ride fast down the mountain. I was keeping up with my friends. Everybody was excited. I didn't feel like, you know, because I've got a very amazing support system, amazing family, amazing friends, and you do. and they're all willing to to wait for me and hang out. And you know, they get to the end of the street corner, and I'm 30 seconds behind. It's like they're all hanging out for me. I'm just like, oh man, this sucks. I I just I'm so conscious of of how much everyone's waiting on me constantly. And and in this sport, it was like, wow, now I'm waiting on them. Now I'm getting to the bottom of the hill. I'm <laughs> And I'm psyched and we're high fiving and having a great day. And it's like, how can I keep this feeling moving? Because I need something like this in my life, you know, going from base jumping and being able to hike out to remote areas and climb cliffs and jump off of them or, you know, doing night missions on on antennas and climbing up these things and, and just being adventurous. Uh, I just didn't have that. I didn't have that freedom. Um, mm. And so this gave that to me. And uh, it's been cool to see it kind of change into what it, it changed into. It's built my confidence up. It's given me that joy and something to look forward to. And I think that that, you know, that was huge. Um, I think, you know, to another point, it, like, you know, with, with keeping it heart centered, I, I had this opportunity to, to be filmed and uh, one of my buddies sat down, we were talking about it and uh, he gave me some advice and it, it stuck with me in a big way. And it's helped me to kind of stay centered and, and stay like authentic and, and stay like not like doing it for the camera so to speak and and he said that you know they ask to film with you because they like what they've already seen you do you don't need to go out there and do something you've never done before and show off and and go bigger and go harder because they want to film things that you've already done so go out there be comfortable don't push your limits and don't do something crazy because you know you think that that's what they want to see like they, they already like what you're doing. So that's helped me to stay kind of grounded in a way and and not have that urge. Because I think we all have the urge to go a little bit harder when the camera's on us and put on mm -hmm. a little bit. And and I think that that's really helped, you know, keep me in a safe place that if I am going to do something on a camera, I need to put in the work beforehand and, and don't be trying something wild and crazy because, you know, because the camera's out. I think that that's been, it's been some pretty, pretty profound, valuable words for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and ones that will keep you safe. So, um, well, Jay, it's been awesome talking with you and sharing you with the world. Um, how can people find you for those who do want to follow you on Instagram and socials? Um, so on Instagram, I'm uh, J-A-Y-R-A-W-E-1695. Um, that's pretty much the only place I'm on social right now. Um, uh, YouTube, you can type in my name. And uh, a bunch of things pop up. There's there's a bunch of projects that I've been involved with. Um, I've got a lot of cool stuff coming out here in the future. Some some neat events I'm going to be going to that'll end up getting posted here, hopefully in the next couple months. So yeah, I guess check me out if you want to if you want to throw me a follow and and watch what I've been doing. Then thank you very much and yeah, thank you, Aaron. This has been this has been cool. Hey, all right. Thank you very much, Jay, and thank you everyone for listening and have a wonderful week. Namaste. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. 
If you want to support the podcast and if it's helping you, please consider writing a review. You can go to iTunes or Google Play, go into the search bar and type in Thrive Yoga Fit Transformational Coaching, scroll down and you can leave a review. This helps other people to find me as well as bumps us up in the search ratings. Also, this podcast is sponsor free, so that means we don't receive anything for doing it. If you feel so inclined and this podcast is helping to support you and you want to return the favor and help to support any production costs of the podcast, feel free to give a donation to a Venmo link, Thrive Yoga Fit, or PayPal, Aaron at AaronCoach.com. If you don't have the means, don't worry about it. We're not going anywhere. You're all good. But if you would like to give back, you can give back in those ways. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste.